Yo, what up? So a lot of people that create content here on the YouTube platform forget what it's like to be a beginner. But if you clicked on this video, there's a high chance that it is that you're leveling up from something like this, i.e. a phone. So you get your fancy camera and things can be a little bit overwhelming. Well, today we're gonna tackle one of the subjects which is how to understand everything that's on the dial of your camera and what it affects. And then hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding and be better able to get the great images and video and looks and everything that you need. So let's get into it. First and foremost, welcome to Creative Tech Lab. My name is Leo. This is probably your first time here. So big up to you for clicking on this video that makes you an awesome person. And to the people that have gone down below and hit the subscribe button and the notification button thus far, I always like to just start every video by saying thank you and big up to those people as well. All right, so as mentioned, a lot of people that get into the Sony mirrorless world, particularly like your A6400s or your A7Ds or whatever it is that you have the budget for, they are coming from a smartphone, an iPhone, or Android or whatever it is and I think the big difference there is that the phone does everything for you I used to be one of these people I was a big shot on iPhone person I used to do everything on my iPhone but the iPhone it kind of just does what it is supposed to do at least what the mantra is right you put the phone up you take a picture you take a video it figures everything out for you and you don't have to think it just creates great images for you but then you get your nice fancy camera, your A6400 or whatever it is that you have the budget for and then you're like, I don't necessarily know how this works and you kind of just shoot maybe an auto, there's all these different letters on the dial. Let's get into what these things do here and have you have a better understanding of what modes you should be using for what situations that you're in. Quick housekeeping note though, most of the different modes on the dial are gonna affect something to deal with your exposure, i.e. the light coming into your lens. If you have no idea of how the exposure triangle works, don't worry, I have a video about that. Pause this video, click this link up here or down below, watch the exposure triangle video and then you have a better understanding on exposure triangle and then come back to this video, that way it will make a lot more sense in terms of the different modes there. Also, I'm mainly be demonstrating this while holding the A6400. However, I do have an A7 III and even a small RX100 here. The dials are almost identical across all the different Sony cameras, as well as this would apply to other cameras. Little quirks here or there in terms of layout or a couple extra modes on each camera, but we'll get into that. Let's talk about the main modes here real quick. So starting with the first dial here, you'll see this green dial that says auto, and this is kind of like your iPhone there. The camera will do all the work for you. you have have absolutely no control over the image. So the camera will set your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture, and it will guess best as it can what the exposure should be. You may also notice these green icons in the upper left hand corner of the camera when you're in auto mode and the camera is trying to guess what the scene is. So is it a landscape? Is it a portrait because it sees a face? Is it a macro shot because you're really close up to an object and whatever it is there, the camera is trying to get these different, guess these different modes and set the exposure based on that. And to be honest, once it is that you understand the exposure triangle and you know how to expose an image properly, you won't ever be in auto mode. You won't want to have the camera dictate to you what what your scene should look like. All right, next up on the dial here is P. P is for program auto. Now that is another auto mode where the camera will still guess the scene and set the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. However, you do have a little bit more control over the image where it is that you could set the aperture if you want a more blurry background and it would simultaneously change the shutter speed. The same thing for the ISO, but all three things are changing at a different time, but you could hypothetically tweak things to get at least the look when you're looking in the viewfinder or at the screen to get the look that you're looking for there. So the next two modes on the camera are gonna be what are called priority modes. These are like hybrid auto modes, but basically what happens is it will 
prioritize one of two things, either the aperture or the shutter speed. So the first one here being A is called aperture priority. And what this allows you to do is you could set the aperture for your scene and then the camera will adjust your shutter speed to let the amount of light in based on the image that you have set there. So what I'll do a lot of times is if I'm in a scenario, let's say I'm shooting street photography, I know what I want my overall picture to look like in terms of the aperture. If it's at nighttime, it might be a low f-stop like f1.4 in some of my lenses or in the daytime, if I wanna just make sure that I'm able to capture things really quickly, I might use a higher f-stop like f7.1 or even a little bit higher so I know I have everything in focus. But I would just set that while I'm in aperture priority mode and then the camera will set the shutter speed and then if I'm not getting the shutter speed that I want, usually what I'll do is just quickly adjust the ISO which will bring the shutter speed either higher or lower for me to get that motion blur that I want there. But a lot of professionals instead of using manual mode, if they're in a really run and gun situation, they will let the camera do some of the work for them because they've already set their creative choice in what they want the image to look like there. And again, you could technically still set the shutter speed by adjusting your ISO there, which is pretty cool. Speaking of shutter speed, the next mode that we have there is S for shutter priority. Now this is really useful. If you understand your shutter speed, you know that the shutter affects the blur, how you keep things in focus there. This is really useful if you're going to like a kid's soccer game or a sporting event, whatever it is, and things are gonna be really moving really fast. So then you can in turn do the reverse of what we're talking about before, where it is that you could shut the shutter so you know that every time you snap a picture of something that's moving, it's gonna freeze that motion. And then the camera will adjust the aperture to set the right exposure there. So then same principle would apply there. You could set your shutter speed, the camera will set the aperture, but if you wanna change it, you'll switch your ISO real quick and the camera would adjust the shutter speed to set the right exposure for the camera there and you're good to go. One other thing that I do need to mention when talking about these priority modes or any type of auto mode as well, is on the different cameras, you could set what is called your exposure compensation. So on the a7 III, you will have an additional dial right here that says, starts at zero and then you could go from negative one to negative three or positive one to positive three there. And that will actually have the camera when it is in any of the auto or priority modes there, it will overcompensate or undercompensate for the image depending on the look that you're going for. So that's one more thing that you could do there when the camera is guessing your correct exposure. You might wanna underexpose your images so you're gonna bring them back in post or overexpose depending on the situation that you're in there. On the A7 III or something like the RX100, there's no additional dial for exposure compensation unless you were to set it for that, which you probably wouldn't because you don't have that many dials to use. But what I typically do is put it in my function menu and then I can always go in there and set that before it is that I set my aperture or my shutter speed in my given priority mode there. If you have no idea how to set up your camera, your function mode, or your custom buttons there, link up here to a video I did on custom settings on the A6400, which would work well on all the other cameras there as well. All right, next up on the dial, we're gonna have M. M is the mode that you most likely want to be in because it gives you the most control over your image manual mode. Now you have full control over your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. So a lot of times what will happen in these priority modes here is even though it's exposing, it's exposing for the whole image, you might want a particular part of your image to be exposed or something to be a little bit darker, brighter, however it is there, once you know how to use your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture together, you could get the most creative look there. That's what manual mode is. That's what most cameras were like before the invention of smartphones and smart cameras and all that stuff is you had to adjust everything there on the fly. Anyway, manual mode is the mode eventually you want to start to shoot in manual mode. As a matter of fact, I would suggest once you understand the exposure triangle, it's better for you to start shooting in manual mode and once you understand that then the two priority modes are probably the other modes you rely on most but only once you understand shooting in manual and getting the images right like that then the other ones start to make sense there so next up the next mode here is where things start to get a little bit different between all the cameras that I mentioned on the a6400 you have what is called MR for memory recall and then on the bigger cameras like your a7s your a7 threes your a7 
S3 and stuff, you have actual numbers one, two, and three. They represent the same thing as memory recall. So you may want to save a particular set of settings. For me, it is my video settings or different video settings. So in the A6400, when you go to MR mode, it will bring you to this black screen here and you will see that you could select either one, two or three again not to plug too much but if you want to know how it is that i have my memory recall set up here on my a6400 link up top and link down below again and that will tell you how i quickly switch for b-roll for shooting slow motion on this camera here but memory recall is the set settings that you use very often and again i use that for video settings and then next up on all the cameras is going to be your movie mode so everything that we've been talking about before typically affects your photos or is what most people would traditionally use for taking still photos now some of the priority modes you could use with shooting video so when you first set up your camera you do need to put it in movie mode and then go into the exposure mode and set it to manual that way you could change all the settings that you need to change particularly if we're talking about memory card like we were before you need to do all that in there while the camera is in movie mode to affect your movie settings that's the best way to set up the camera again if you want to see how to set up that, those cameras there that video that i talked about on the a6400 is the best way to do it there next mode on the dial here is going to be s and q which stands for slow and quick this enables you to do one of two things which is exactly as it sounds it either allows you to shoot something in slow motion or in quick motion based on the frame rate so this is one of two ways that you could either shoot slow motion or time lapses there so if you come in here you have the record setting which would be what you want the end video to be typically for me that would be 24 frames per second and then you could set a frame rate anywhere from 120 frames per second so the camera will so then it will tell you that this is going to be slowed down up to five times there at 120 frames per second or you could go all the way down to one frame per second it's going to say that you're going to get quick motion sped up 24 times there because it's going to be taking one frame every second and then it's going to give you that time lapse look there once it's stitched together as a 24 frames per second and then the a6400 and the rx100 does have a panoramic mode that is not featured on the bigger cameras the a7 III or the a7 f3s or the a, any of the a7 alpha cameras there and then lastly on all the cameras we have what is another type of auto mode when it is that i mentioned auto and i said the camera will try and guess the scene you do have scene selection here where it is that you could try and set the different scenes here again though this is another auto mode that you probably would not be using there because you would want to dictate the terms of your scene there as the creative person making the creative decision so that brings us to the end of the video here hopefully this video brought you some value if this video helps you out in any way shape or form please go ahead and drop it a like if you're into Sony cameras in particular, we talk a lot about run and gun videography here on the channel with a lot more stuff to come. So please go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button and wait till the end of the video because there's probably another video already on the channel that you would like. But anyway, I won't ramble on. I will catch you in the next video. Big up yourself. Peace.